Hey guys, welcome back to the corner. This is Drac. Hey, uh, just first off, I'd like to apologize to all you guys. Uh, I've been out for a while. I got really sick. I uh, got some kind of lung infection. And even after the infection, it took me about three weeks to get to the point where I could speak without having a coughing fit. So, but I'm back. I want to start doing regular videos again. And I figured, hey, TOA just reset. So let's do a video on TOA. Uh, also known as Trial of Ascension. Let me just give you guys a brief rundown in case you're not familiar with TOA as to what this is and how it works. So Trial of Ascension is located right over here to the left of Kairos Dungeon. It consists of 100 floors. You get <clears throat> for your rewards, every floor that ends in a 5, you get uh, pink crystals. For every floor ending in a 0, you get a bonus reward. So let's go down. I'll run through these real quick. <clears throat> all the way down to the bottom. All right, so for floor 5 and for floor 15, you get 10 crystals. For floor 10, you get 50 energy. I was hoping it was going to show us. It doesn't look like it is. Uh, for floor 20, you get uh, a 3-star rainbow mon. For floors 25 and 35, you get 20 pink crystals. Uh, on floor 30, you get a mystical scroll. On floor 40, you get uh, 100 pink crystals. Uh, floors 45 and 50 give you 30, or sorry, 45 and 55 give you 30 pink crystals. Uh, 50 gives you uh, two mystic scrolls. 60 gives you a four-star rainbow on. 65 and 75 give you 40 crystals. Um, 70 gives you a devil mon. 80 gives you 300 crystals, 85 and 95 give you 50 crystals each, uh, 90 gives you a light and dark scroll, and 100 gives you a legendary scroll. <clears throat> now, in addition to the normal mode, which you see, you also have hard mode. Uh, hard mode has the exact same rewards, but it does have a different layout of monsters, uh, and the monsters have a lot higher health and a lot higher resistance, so they can be a lot more difficult to kill. All right. Uh, on every floor that doesn't give you an explicit reward, like I told you, you just get blue crystals and one exclusive summoning piece. So all told, you get 80 mystical summoning pieces for clearing floor 100, and you get 700 pink crystals for clearing up to floor 100, in addition to the other rewards that you would normally get. So how do you beat TOA? Well, the floors get progressively more difficult as you go up. To beat TOA, you need a team of what I call controllers. These are monsters that don't do a lot of damage, but can control the enemy well enough that the enemy gets an extremely limited number of turns, so even though you're not doing a lot of damage, you can still beat them down pretty easily. Um, my team, I'll show you here, consists of Beretta, Basalt, Spectre, Emma, and Mav. Now the top three, Basalt, uh, Beretta, and Spectre, are my controllers. They allow me to control the enemy attack bar, uh, rendering it almost impossible for my enemy to move in some cases. Uh, and then Emma, of course, is my healer, and Mav <clears throat> offers a little bit of control for me, but not as much as the other three. But the main reason I have him is he speed boosts and reduces everyone's cooldown, which enables my guys to have even more control. Um, I've got Beretta ruined on Despair Broken. So the Despair is where <clears throat> what I mainly use him for is for controlling trash mobs and killing trash mobs faster with his two dots. Uh, Basalt is on Focus Violent. Uh, in order to beat TOA, uh, it really helps if you have your accuracy above 50, which is why I have him on Focus. I, not all my guys do have that, but they've got enough going for them in other areas that it helps. Spectre I've got on... Whoops, doesn't want to select him. I've got him on Swift Broken. And see, his accuracy isn't quite as high as I'd like it, but for the runes, you know, these are pretty pretty decent for what I have right now. I don't have anything better than them that are in focus or any of the two sets that I'd like. Emma is on Violent, or, yeah, Violent Will. And he is on Swift Guard. Ultimately, I'd like to move Mav over to a Violent build as well. I just haven't found any Violent runes that really are a whole lot better than his Swift runes. So I'm just waiting on that. 
Um, so this month, uh, Trial of Ascension resets every month uh, on the 14th of the month at 9 p.m. Pacific time. So it resets, and every time it resets, it all of the floors get shaken up. So you'll fight uh, every month. It's a completely different trial than it was the last month. Now the main difference is there are two bosses for floor 100, and they rotate every month. So one of them will be on normal mode, and the other will be on hard mode, and the next month they'll flip. So this month we're fighting Athros. Athros is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, but he is the easier of the two bosses. Uh, he's slower, and his mechanics are a lot easier. So I'll show you guys him this month, and then next month I'll show you Lyrith, the other one. All right, so main things to consider about him. Um, when he hits, he removes beneficial effects and reduces attack speed and attack power. Uh, he hits all enemies and breaks their defense. And his third skill, which is a really annoying one, is he counterattacks... Uh, and he heals himself when he counterattacks. Now, he also has an additional ability that isn't shown here, which is every turn he purges all, benef uh, all negative effects from himself, and he gets a permanent stat boost for each negative effect he purges. So that is part of the, what makes him difficult, is you want to limit his turns, which is why I'm using my control team here. Uh, you want to limit his turns so that he never gets to move. Because any debuffs you got on him, he's going to just flat out remove them, and he's going to get stronger every time. If you carry this battle out too long, eventually he'll get so powerful, he'll just kill you all in one hit. So you do have to be kind of careful with him. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, so Trial of Ascension, every battle, every floor consists of three battles. Um, the first two battles are just trash mobs, and the third battle is, in this case, a boss with two towers. So here, I want to try and keep these sylphids from moving as much as I can. And if I can't keep them from moving, I want to provoke them. So I'm going to try and provoke this one here. Basalt's going to knock all their attack bars back. Didn't work on that one, but I got a violent proc, so I'm going to try and provoke that one. Failed. Let's hope for a stun on that one. Nope, no stun. So the problem that I'm going to face here is... Depending on the AI, the AI is going to use a shield. Yep, she shields. Which reduces chance of being crit and absorbs. So let's go ahead and break that. Okay, now I'm going to use Wings of Wind, which is going to reset everybody's cooldowns. Well, reduces their cooldowns by one turn. It's not a true reset. Go ahead and push that back again. Uh, you know what? I like keeping her stunned. Ah, she resisted. And let's remove that. Go ahead and try and provoke the perfect provoke work this time. Although in retrospect, I probably should have provoked the middle one because the middle one hasn't used their ability yet. There we go. Middle one's taken care of. <clears throat> I just like to keep everybody's defense up. So almost every time uh, one or both of my healers becomes available, I will use their buff because I like having defense boosted, especially in these TOA floors. Some of these enemies can hit pretty hard at these high levels. Sorry. Let's go ahead. Now let's do this. Oh, the other thing that Mav does that is really nice, especially when we get to the boss, is not only does he reduce everyone's cooldown by one turn, but he actually removes one debuff from them whenever he uses it. Oh, that one hasn't used it yet. Reset that one. Perfect. And got a stun on it, so nice. Robbed him of two turns. So as you can see, I mean, the succubuses, <clears throat> I'm not even sure the succubuses have had a chance, to, I think one of them's had a chance to attack. So the whole purpose of this team is control. It's not moving fast. I, as you can see, this team is taking time to whittle them down. But in doing so, you know, I'm not taking any damage whatsoever here. So this is the kind of team you want, um, especially when you first start trying to tackle TOA, is you want a team that just has absolute control, makes it so the enemy can never do anything. Yeah, the battles are going to be long. I uh, need to brace yourself for that, <clears throat> especially when you do TOA hard. But you know what? It makes it easy. Now, I will give you guys a note on TOA hard here. 
um, TUA hard makes it so you can't use any duplicate monsters. Now, I haven't actually tested this. I'm not quite sure if that means you can't take two basalts in or if it means you can't take two battle mammoths in. <clears throat> but so every monster in TOA hard has to be unique. So here, these guys, um, the light guys are really annoying. They make it hard to kill anyone. And of course, the wa fire Valkyrias do a decent amount of damage. And I tapped the wrong button there. The fire Valkyrias do a decent amount of damage and resurrect. So this time around, I want to keep the fire Valkyrias especially under control. Try and make it so they don't get a turn at all um, after I start killing guys. Let's see if we can rob him for two turns. There we go. And this particular battle is just annoying all the way around just because the, the light guys are really annoying too. I don't remember their skill sets off the top of my head, but I think they also have a res. So you're you're facing a battle where every enemy you face can res. In this case, in this case, this trash mob wave can actually be in some cases more difficult than the final boss if you don't have a good control team, because they'll just keep resing each other over and over again. Alright. So the real trick on this battle is of course after you start killing them. We want to drop them all to low health <clears throat> and try and Try and have them all die around the same time. We don't want to kill one, and then they'll just res that one. So we want to try and drop them out to where they all die around the same time. Uh, provoke that one. There we go. Let's get a shield up. Okay, so we've had one die. So, now this is the hard part. Um, this one, the one on the right, she's about to go. She's going to try and res. So, let's see if we can knock her attack bar back. Okay, knocked it back a little bit. Now let's go for a provoke. Try for a provoke again. There we go. We got it this time. So, <clears throat> they're all going to die now. The dots are going to kill them. We don't have to worry about controlling them anymore. All right, so here we go. Atros. So I told you about this. It removes all harmful effects and permanently increases attack power, defense, and attack speed according to the number of effects removed. So you want to be careful you don't get him with too many dots. Or too many, uh, too many negative effects. He's immune to dots. You don't have to worry about those. His towers. The left tower disturbs HP recovery by two turns. Oh, did not want to hit that. And then the other crystal increases the attack bar of the boss. So... We want to take out the right crystal for sure, and the left crystal I can actually ignore. But the right crystal needs to die. So we're going to just keep him slowed and keep using knockback abilities and have Beretta just stack up dots as much as he can. So the majority of this fight and killing this boss <clears throat> is just stacking up our dots. Um, whenever Spectre's up, I'm just going to special assault the boss. Now, we don't have to worry about too much else. I'm just going to keep the boss from taking a turn <clears throat> and just keep using uh, my turn interrupt effects to, to try and keep the boss down while I stack up dots on these crystals. Sorry about that. Got another cough coming on. Not quite completely over it. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. So let's go ahead and just keep rolling. Now, this does take a minute. All right. But at the end of this, we get a legendary scroll. Now, I have, uh, I think I've got 18 mystical scrolls up right now. Um, and then I also have uh, a light and dark scroll and a water scroll. And then I'll have a legendary scroll from this. So we, when we're done here, we'll do just a little fun, quick summon session, see what I get. Oh, I meant to use that on Athros. Oh, well. So the big thing about Athros is just remember, every time you hit him, he does uh, strike back and heal a little bit. Now, usually the heal, even on my weaker attacks, 
is less than the damage dealt. It just makes it so it takes a long time to beat him down. And as you can see, these crystals, I, you know, I don't know exactly how much, but I estimate that they probably have around half a million health. They're a pain in the butt, which is why you need to have Beretta stacking up his, uh, his dots on him. And this right crystal just keeps resisting him. There we go. All right. Knock Athros down. Uh-oh. He resisted that time. So he's going to get a turn, and he's going to get faster and stronger. And there's nothing we can do about that. Luckily, the amount of, of a boost that he gets is small enough that those two dots don't scare me too much. So let's knock him back again. And realistically, <clears throat> I've actually got it down with my team with the speed that they have and the rotation that they have that if they are not resisted, and that's that's the key here, if they are not resisted by Atheros, I can actually make it so Atheros never gets a turn. So that's kind of the benefit to this team. And that crystal, this is the hard part, and I forgot to mention that. Because the way the crystal works, when the crystal gets a turn, it buffs Athro it gives Atheros an attack bar buff. So we don't want to let the crystal get too many turns, but in order for the dots to work, the crystal needs to get a couple turns. <laughs> so we got to make sure that we can survive through that. I mean, you guys saw how much damage it did to my Basalt. My Basalt you know, has like 25k health. He doesn't have a huge amount of defense, but he's got a lot of health. All right, so you know what? Uh, Athros almost has a turn. I want to set him back, and we'll use his uh, <clears throat> do his dots next turn. So the crystal, we're going to let the crystal get two more turns. So one more turn, it's going to do damage. Uh, it's going to buff Atheros' attack bar. He's going to do damage to us. It's going to hurt. Um, but the next turn after that, he'll die from all the dots. So we only have to worry about the crystal one more time. All right, perfect. So the idea is the next time... Defenses up here. <clears throat> All right. So now he's gonna hit. <clears throat> he tar Sorry about the coughs, guys. He targeted Emma. Emma is the tankiest character I have. So you know, I'm, I'm very glad that he targeted her. So it's over for the right tower. We can ignore the right tower. Now we're gonna just focus on Athros and keeping him down. All right. So as you can see, I mean, he's healing almost the exact same amount of damage I'm doing to him. It's kind of a pain in the butt. The real clincher here is, of course, Spectre. He might get a turn here. I got resisted on my slow. Yep, there he is. Okay. So the real clincher here is Spectre. Spectre's the one that's doing... Um, Doing the most damage here, he's really the only one that's outdoing the amount of healing that Athros does from each hit. I mean, I am doing more damage than he's healing, but it is a small amount more. So it makes it very long if you don't have Spectre. I, I tell anyone who's working on a TOA team, I don't care who else is in your team, what, whether it's a damage team, a control team, or an outlast team, you got to have Spectre. He adds the control and he adds the damage for fighting the bosses, especially Athros. Now, the problem with Emma is he's actually healing himself by almost the exact amount of damage that Emma's dealing. Kind of a pain in the butt. Alright. Those crystals just aren't getting a turn. <laughs> it's alright. That's fine with me. Let's set him back. So, I mean, as you guys can see here, I mean, he's not, now that he's not getting the crystal buffs, as long as he does not resist, he is not getting a turn. And I can keep this up pretty much indefinitely, which is why I recommend these control teams. Because what, oh, there goes that crystal. 
uh, what these things offer is just too great to ignore. Yeah, let's just do this. So that crystal on the left is going to die all on its own. We don't even need to worry about that. Make sure we keep our defense up just in case he resists. But I think it might fall off, but that's okay. So Beretta, no resist, no resist. <clears throat> so this month, you know, I was really hoping to show you guys Lyrith last month, the other boss, because her mechanics are a lot trickier than his are. And my team is actually a little different for high fighting her because you need someone that can do a lot of damage to tear her down quickly. So I have a, <clears throat> an actual damage dealer in that team. But unfortunately, I got sick right as it reset and I just didn't recover in time. Oh, he resisted Basalt. That's okay, Beretta should be back up. T no, he resisted that one too. He might get a turn here, guys. Let's wait and watch, see what happens. A little defense buff. Oh, he got a Violent. There we go. Now, he's, he's as long as he doesn't resist, he's not getting a turn. He resisted that one, so he might get a turn. Uh, Inspector's going to be our clincher here. Is Spectre going to be able to... Nope. Yeah, he's going to get a turn. That's all right. So as you can see, I mean, he's still... He's removed, what now, six buffs from himself? And the amount of damage that he does is still kind of negligible. So you can keep him up like this for a very long time as long as you don't stack too many debuffs on him and let and you keep his speed slow and keep resetting his turns he never gets to the point where he does a, enough damage to really be considered dangerous it's if you don't have the speed control going on that he becomes intolerable at this rate we may actually kill that crystal before the dots do <laughs> with just beretta and basalt doing their aoe's Now let's reset that. All right. So, I mean, as you guys can see, I've said it before, this is not a difficult fight if you have the right team for it. In fact, the truth is, I could probably auto this battle, but... I'm just not quite confident enough in my team yet that that's a, that I'm thinking that that's a brilliant idea. There we go. Because what you have with this team, when you let it go auto, is it feels like Beretta uses his his attack bar knockback at the absolute worst times. He'll use it when they have like no attack bar at all, and that's the one thing that I'm afraid of in letting it go auto. And quite frankly, I mean, this is an easy fight. If I go auto with it, I can always come back and just do it again. But it does take a long time. All righty. So let's go ahead and buff speed there. Sorry, video is going to clip a little bit here just because I had to step away for a moment. All right, let's go ahead and finish this. Oh, he resisted. He might get a turn here. Let's see what uh, Basalt and Spectre have to say about it. Yeah, he's going to get a turn. So see, his damage is still not huge. We've done a good job of keeping his damage down. As far as I know, he does not have a top limit to how much his, he can increase his stance by absorbing debuffs, but we're doing a pretty good job of keeping him, because he only gets, you know, I want to say just based on my own experience, I don't have any math to back this up, I know you guys know that I'm big on math and the numbers, I don't have any math to back this up, just based on the small damage increases I've seen, I think he only gets like a 1 or a 2% increase to stats for each debuff he removes. So the way I have my team built, he doesn't, he 
he's really starting to resist. That's going to piss me off. The amount of damage he's getting is not huge. All right, awesome. We get a shield up before he gets a turn. Hits everyone. Didn't even break the shield on a couple of them. All right, let's rebuff everyone's defense. Remove everyone's debuff. Okay, we got a slow, and we got a reset. Good, 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 good. Now, as long as he doesn't resist again, you know, he's he's going to die before he gets another turn. So, uh, you know, I haven't been counting, but I think that's only, you know, four or five turns that he's got in this entire battle because of how well my team is doing it, controlling him. That left tower, yeah, it's been up there for a long time. Almost kind of wondering if I want to kill it just to get it out of the way because it's annoying. <laughs> Rebuff defense. Another reason I'm rebuffing defense, guys, is Basalt's uh, attack bar knockback also scales with his defense. So I like to keep his defense up. Now, in that case, you know, I didn't get it. didn't matter because I used it before his defense buff fell off. Or I used it after his buff fell off and then rebuffed him. So let's go there. Do the damage. Reset. Ooh, he resisted. But I saved. I saved Spectre. Oh, he resisted that one too. So he will get another turn. I was wrong. He gets another turn. But let's get a shield and a buff up so he does less damage. Boom. I mean, he broke the shield and removed the buff, but that was all. <laughs> Knock him back. All right, Spectre, slow him down. Oh, he resisted the slow. He just decided this time he wants to put up a fight before he dies. He doesn't want to be like last time I fought him. Last time I fought him, he only got two turns the whole match. Almost there. Let's see if we could just kill him. And down he goes. Alright, so we're going to get 9,900 crystals for it, and we're going to get a legendary scroll. So, that was TOA normal. Now, as you, I'll show you guys on hard. I have been working on hard. I do every month. Um, right now, I'm on 63. I haven't hit a point that I can't pass it yet, but I am at the point where battles take me, you know, 15 minutes per floor. So, I haven't even tried 63 yet. Um, not last month, but the month before that, I actually made it all the way up to floor 80, but I couldn't clear the boss on 80. So here's hoping I make it up that high again this month. All right, so just like to see whether it was reported or not. How many monsters do I have? 92, so I need to move some of them out here. A lot of them are low-level fodder. I can start by evolving those guys real quick, and then I'll just feed the rest. Okay, yep, you guys are going to see me do just some real quick evolutions. Been working on uh, six-starring a lot of monsters, and for that I've needed a lot of trash, and I actually burned myself out of scrolls for a bit there, so I was leveling up, down to leveling up the really low-level trash, using XP boosts and such. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it works. Oh. Don't want to level up their skills because that just slows you down. Okay, get a couple of these three stars up and then we'll have enough room to do everything. And 20 slots, that should be enough. Let's count real quick, make sure. 
So I got a legendary, a light and dark, a water. So 21, so I need 22 slots. There, we're good. Let's go ahead and summon. You know what? I like starting with light and darks. Let's hope for some lightning. No, no lightning. Tark Frankenstein. Let's go water. No lightning again. Bounty hunter. You know, the water bounty hunter is good. I actually want to build one, and I do need some more skill ups for him. Let's do our exclusive. You know, I'm really hoping for that vertihile. Hey, I got a lightning. Let's see what it is. And it's the Sylphid. You know, she's not bad. I already got her, and I do need some skill-ups for her, so I won't cry too much about getting her. She sure ain't a Vertihile. All right, let's go through our Mystics. No Lightning. Elven Ranger. You know, I am skilling up a Fire Elven Ranger, so extra food's good. Ooh, Lightning. Let's see what we get. I actually don't have a Phantom Thief yet. I've never even looked at him, so that could be fun. We'll see how it goes. Living Armor. I do need some Living Armors for skill-ups. I've got a Silver that I want to build up for raids. So I won't cry too much about that. Ooh, another Lightning. Getting some good Lightnings here. Hopefully some good monsters. Okay, you know, the Wind Horus. I've actually been looking for one on this account. I, I really like his third still. It buffs everyone's defense and crit rate and fully fills up one target ally's attack bar. I really want to build a defense-based damage team and put him on it. So I'm actually really excited about that. That's a good one. I did not mean to click out of it. All right, so eight mystics left. And then we move on to the legendary and see what I get. Am I going to get any more lightning out of this? Amazon. I do have a light Amazon that I want to skill up, so I'm happy with getting an Amazon out of that. Another living armor. No lightning, so harpy. All right. I can't complain too much. I mean, I got three lightnings so far, four lightnings, so not bad. Now the legendary. Last time I had a legendary, it gave me garbage. Okay, so it gave me four star. It gave me another Emma. Emma's an amazing monster. Don't get me wrong, but I already have one. <laughs> and I don't think... I don't think I have the others. So I got four total lightnings out of that. So let's look. Do I have any other Neostone agents that I can use her as skill up food for? Um... No. No, I do not. So she's just going to go in storage and stay there for a long time. That's kind of sad. Oh, I do have a water phantom thief. So now I'll have to look at the water and wind and determine which one I like better. Well, so that was a little disappointing, but, you know, I can't complain too much. I got more lightnings than I expected out of it. So, And I did get the wind Horus, so I, I cannot complain there. The wind Horus would work really well once I get silver up. You know, and I've got Rama. Uh, I've got my uh, Ramahan here, and I've got Copper there. You know, so putting him with those three would could just be really, really devastating against the right teams. You know, as long as they don't have an ignore defense on the team, it could be a lot of fun. So I'm kind of excited about that. But that's all I've got for the, today's video. So next month. I'll uh, I'll do the, the Lyrith video, or, you know, if I get really lucky and I make it to Lyrith on hard mode, I'll definitely be videoing that to see if we can beat her on hard. But that's all I've got. Uh, keep watching the channel. I do hope to start uploading videos again regularly, and we'll see you guys next time at the corner.